Dexter New Blood series review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on Dexter New Blood, the one and done last season of Dexter. Now, Dexter is an absolutely amazing show. It might even be, if we're counting just the seasons that I enjoy, it might even be in the top five shows of all time. For me, when I find a movie that I like or a TV show that I like and it's completed good and they ruin it in the other sequels, I like to forget about those other sequels. So like for me, it's like season one, two, and four of Dexter is pretty much all I need to see. And the only reason I don't really like four is that there's a big death at the end that kind of throws things off for future seasons, although it doesn't really affect that season as much. So I will be doing spoilers of this season of Dexter, Dexter New Blood, but I will not be doing spoilers of season one, two, or four. So if you want to check those out, I highly, highly recommend it. It's some of the most entertaining, well put together TV show material that I've ever seen in my life. It is so good. Season one, two of Jexter, please check it out. So, so anyways, there's gonna be full spoilers for this new season, let's jump right into it. So basically the whole story is, Dexter escaped like 10 years ago. He hasn't killed anybody, which is kind of crazy for Dexter. But the very first episode of the show, there's like this, a really annoying kid who's just really asking for it. Dexter ends up killing him at the end of the episode. And then on top of that, his son Harrison is now, I think he's like 15 or 16. He finds out where Dexter lives. He breaks into his house. He knows that he's not Jim Lindsay, which is his fake new identity. He knows that he's Dexter Morgan. So it's that initial crack in the armor. And then on top of that, he is dating the police chief and so you have that whole angle and it kind of brings him closer to that Miami Metro kind of virus because he is a little bit in the police station so it brings a little bit of that back and then on top of that you have the killer this season which is Kurt Caldwell it's the guy from Shawshank Redemption the evil guard guy Clancy Brown but yeah he's pretty good I think he's a he's a really good actor I really wish they did a little bit more with him, him as a serial killer but he's like essentially finds these girls who are gonna run away locks them in a room for like a couple of days and then lets them go and when they go he like shoots them and then like goes and preserves them because he his whole thought process is that they're gonna run away and they're just gonna get hurt so he's gonna like kill them and save them weird whole thing but you have that you know a pretty decent killer of the season and that's basically the main synopsis let's jump into the pros of dexter new blood the pros is they really recreated a new kind of world for Dexter that I was actually interested to see unfold and to find out a lot more of. Um, by episode two and three, there was almost a little bit of this classic Dexter family vibe. Dexter has his girlfriend and, and the beginning of the season, they're really good. There's a little bit of that family vibe. And then he has his son and his girlfriend's daughter, like they're all getting, they're all getting along. It's a, it almost feels like this quirky kind of family style atmosphere that was in the earlier seasons of Dexter, how he was like doing all these bad things behind people's back, but then he would come around his family and he would seem like the most perfect guy. And it would be such a nice blend of, he's really dark, he's doing all this stuff and he comes in this this perfect family vibe. So the family vibe went away really quick, but I really liked that they recreated a good cast around Dexter that I really wanted to see slowly unfold, but unfortunately we only had one season and I'll get to more on that in the cons, but I really wanted a good amount of time to get to know all these characters, to you know slowly have each one find out a little bit more about Dexter and uh, slowly peel away the onion. I actually really wanted to see that and I thought that there was some pretty interesting family vibes similar to the original Dexter, like how I was saying how he, like everybody loved him, you know, he had like a side where everybody loved him, but no Nobody knew how bad he was, and I really liked that in the beginning of this season. And then it had very slight remnants of the original Dexter, or things that I liked about the original Dexter. Again, it was very, very slight, but there would it would pump into times where, like, man, things would just go into full gear. You know, like when you uncover Kurt Caldwell, all the bodies, that was really good. Or just there was a few times where it just felt like we were we were flying again. It felt like you know, oh man, it's just it's all the good stuff about Dexter. There was little bits of it that would come back into the show, but it was very, very slight. 
gives you a whole new world to explore and I actually really wanted to see two maybe three seasons to like let these characters breathe and to slowly let each one find out more and more secrets instead of having to have them all uncovered really fast and then the last pro that I had was it had pretty good acting like I don't really find anybody as really a bad actor um, there was a couple characters that I wasn't really a fan of, but the act, but the actual actors and actresses themselves, I thought did a great job. I just think some of the direction of some of the characters should have been tuned up just a little bit. But overall, you know, the acting was good. The mixed aspects I had was Deb. Now, we all love Deb. It's hard for me to watch a Dexter without Deb. I feel like she's an integral part of the puzzle. For me, I like all the members of Miami Metro. I like Deb. I like Rita. I like all of the original feeling of Dexter because in my opinion, once they kill somebody off, they're not able to recreate them as good. And I thought the idea of Deb was good, but as everybody knows in this show, she just so annoying. She's so hard to watch, you know, or like when finally Dexter and Harrison are having a moment and she's just telling him to lie she's screaming at him she's just almost nothing but frustration and i feel like it's such a missed opportunity because as soon as you see her you're like this is a perfect way to have her injected into dexter and have it feel like dexter because harry used to in you know be in dexter's head the same way i thought it was a great idea and just so poorly executed and again i like deb i wanted to see more of deb but I mean, there was almost no scenes that I enjoyed with her, to be honest. And then the last mixed aspect I have is the snow location. I felt like there's just not that much that they could do. Like, it'd be more interesting if he was, you know, maybe by like a ski resort or he had some kind of way so he could get around some hustle and bustle. Um, also, like I feel like Michael C. Hall, yeah, he's getting a little bit older, but I feel like the cold makes him look older than he actually is, and he's in the cold all the time, so it was just like, you know, he almost looks better when you see him on like a talk show or something when it's not all cold. He looks like younger, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm kind of just torn on the cold. I, I like the idea that it was a complete mix-up, and I feel like that's kind of what the show needed but I just feel like they didn't do enough with it. The town is just too small and simple and you feel like you're going in the same spots just over and over again. Okay, and now into the long list of cons. So let's jump into them. I recommend seeing season one, two, and four of Dexter. They are magnificent, perfect. Probably my top five TV shows ever. This one, not so much, but let's jump into the cons, shall we? So the cons was that it had a very, very slow beginning. Now I gotta say, I probably, I enjoyed episode one enough. You know, it wasn't my favorite, but it gave me enough to chomp on. Episodes two through five, I don't know what it was. I was not interested in almost anything that happened in any of these episodes. Uh, it felt really, really slow. And it really seems like it's set up for like multiple seasons because like I said, once you see the whole family aspect of you have Dexter, you have Angela, his girlfriend, you got his son and you got her daughter, you know, nobody knows who Dexter is. So you could have slow, it would have been great to just slowly have each character find a little bit of something, find a little bit of something, you know? So basically they slow down the plot and like nothing happens for like five episodes. And then they cram like all 10 episodes worth of stuff into a few episodes and it just seems really fake. Everybody's chilling and then all of a sudden like, it's time for me to uncover everything in 15 minutes. Like that's just kind of what it feels like. And as soon as I saw the whole family aspect of Dexter, I was like, there's so much to do with this whole situation. Like every episode needs to be action packed. There was so much you could have done. And right when you're like, okay, you got, you better go a million miles an hour and finish all these stories out good. It just chills for like five episodes, you know? Ridiculously slow in the beginning. Lots of the original magic of this show is gone. I mean, maybe even up to 80% of the time, I was just kind of out of it. Dexter's little quirky things he says to himself, they seem kind of dumb. It just seems like, oh, like Dexter used to do this. So write some lines for him to tell himself. Like, I, I mean, one out of 10 lines he said seemed a little bit smart. And it just seemed like, oh, just write him something to whisper to himself. When the original Dexter, every time it was like, a, it felt very smart, the things that he was 
was saying or how clever or like, aha, a little jab, you know, this one was just very, there was like no magic to it. Then the lack of kills, I think there's maybe three kills by Dexter in this show. And it's kind of like, they paint him as like the most evil that he's ever been. Like you're just the serial killer who just basically just needs to die. But then he like barely kills anybody. I don't know. It's just kind of weird to see a Dexter where he's not like, not killing anybody he's killing people but he's like barely killing people it's like this can we have full-on dexter or can we have him trying to quit like i don't know this whole three kills for or three or four kills for 10 episodes was just very unlike dexter it also seemed like this show is more about harrison like it almost feels like it should be called like the morgans or like dexter and harrison because the way that they frame everything they frame it like harrison is way more important than dexter i don't really have a problem with that except that the show is called Dexter and no matter who you were to Dexter, Dexter always came first, whether it was Deb, whether it was Rita, whether it was anything. Dexter was always the most important. He was always the character that just was in the most knowledge and that you was kind of created to be likable. And it's mainly made, again, for Harrison, I guess, to seem likable or to see it from his point of view. But you end up not liking him because he's just such a jerk to Dexter the whole time, you know? The high school party scenes in here were so cringy. You could just tell it was just a train wreck waiting to happen. And on top of that, the, the storyline of all the partying teens really goes nowhere. It's just completely almost like wasted. And again, it almost seems like it's made for Harrison. Like this is about Harrison. We see Harrison go to high school school and all the stupid drama and I just found that by the end I didn't like watching any of the high school scenes and they didn't matter at all at the end so I think you just remove them 100% so the Mary fucking kill girl she's a good actress and I think she's pretty attractive I know that has nothing to do with it but I have all the reasons to like this person but the way that she was written she was written just a little bit above too many characters I do think the finale with her was it was a really good way to end it and I actually liked her character a little bit more you know you weren't expecting her ending to come so quick but for the most of this she was just really hard to listen to and a lot of it was because she was just like so like ahead of everybody Dexter is behind everybody but Angela is way ahead Mary fucking Kayla is way ahead she knew just a little bit too much more than Dexter I wish she was kind of pulled back a little bit in her knowledge the insane plot conveniences now again they really should have set up maybe two or three seasons with this because you gave us so much to bite off you pretty much couldn't fix it all in one season and that kind of shows i mean there is multiple multiple plot conveniences you know it's like when when kurt finds out that dexter um like burned his son and like he finds out because he gets home and there's ash in the air and then he goes and finds out like oh he finds his son's like titanium pin from his knee in the ash like it's just a little bit too much or when angela you know is able to uncover the body in the cave and it just so happens to be like the most important case to her and she like literally snaps her fingers it's like oh he faked this call when we were gonna search this area which means we need to search this area she goes and maybe seems like almost no time at all she uncovers a body and it just happens to be the most integral like body that she could have possibly found it was just like there's a way to maximize that story but it was just like wow i just feel nothing because it, it just felt so fake you know and on top of that all this stuff angela uncovers at the end it's just like flip a switch and she's able to just figure out almost everything right away there's no difficulty um, there's no anything it's just plot conveniences are just uh, crazy in this one and then also the voice recorder with Mary fucking kill I felt like how how she knew like yeah you can remember Dexter coming over there but just just how she just thinks oh Dexter charged his phone so he must have been recording like I felt like there there needs to be more steps it's just like they just wonder something and it's kind of in left field and it's the perfect thing you know and it just happens over and over and over and it's like i don't mind them figuring it out but give them like a little bit more breadcrumbs like going from a to z is just it seems a little too fake this show i gotta be honest it just did not feel smart uh the original dexter i don't know why it just felt like a smarter kind of show it just seemed like you kind of had to be witty or kind of be focused to really get everything that's going on and almost everything they did just it just felt really dull and not smart to me so the hand holding with explaining like past events of dexter in here was just so cringy now i i get 
that you want to have something to let the new viewers know, kind of catch them up a little bit, but they really just absolutely hold your hand in this one. Like I could have sworn there's probably at least 10 times, which is like, here, here's what happened in, in season four. Here, here's what happened in season four again. Hey, you're born in blood. Hey, I'm born in blood. Oh, I'm born in blood. Oh, I'm born in blood. It's just like, okay, like it, like I, there's no magic anymore because you beat me over the head with it. And then what's the point of going like season four of Dexter was so much better and you just ruined it. So anybody who's never seen season four, which is a much better season than this, it's completely ruined because you just beat everybody over the head with everything that happens. And then there was no replacement for Miami Metro. Now, I gotta be honest, Miami Metro, they were a unique bunch. Like, they are probably some of my favorite side characters that I've ever seen in any show. They are entertaining, they're serious, there's like a emotional sides to them. I just loved Miami Metro from uh, Masuka, Dokes, La Guerta, Angel, a perfect blend. And it's too much to ask them to recreate it here, but again, I like the actors, but I think the direction, there wasn't enough here. And I think we needed more time with these characters to just chill with them, to have fun experiences with them. But it's like, no, we have to rush everything. We don't even get to enjoy anybody. And then I, to be honest, I liked Angela and Dexter, but there was not enough time with them together. You know, I just felt like literally after, after episode, maybe three, they're almost never together and their relationship really goes sour quick and never comes back. And I just really wish we got more good times with Angela so I can envision it more in my head. It seems like they maybe had one to two good episodes and that was it. Uh, so many storylines just go nowhere. So like you had literally like a big old climate change guy, you know, he's in like the first two episodes and then he's just like completely gone. Um, you have like the whole Angel Batista's coming in and like this whole great, you know, showdown between you know, Angel's here, like what's going to happen. So Angel's just on his way. They end it. Don't do anything with that. And then the ending of this was just so weak and unsatisfying. And to be honest, it's like the show was somewhat mediocre. Um, if the, the ending was out of the park, it really could have just, you know, really brought this show up into like a slightly recommend, but I found like the actual ending, maybe the last 15 minutes was just so dumb and terrible. I kept expecting there to be like a fake out because I'm like, it just can't be like this, huh? You know? And even if you want to end with Harrison shooting Dexter, it's like, there's so much better ways to do it. There's so much more ways to have me invested. Like to me, I was just almost like, they, they're not going to do it right. Do it like this. You just couldn't, but they do. So anyways, guys, this season of Dexter was actually pretty hard to watch. It was kind of nice to see something new. It wasn't like a retread of the old seasons. I'm not really sure how I would rate this one uh, against all the seasons of Dexter, because like I said, there's a few of seasons of Dexter that are perfect and the rest are really not the best to average. So I would probably put this near the bottom, to be honest with you guys. Um, I actually like the, the original ending that we had of Dexter, the one that everybody hated where he escapes and becomes a lumberjack. Like to me, that just was a much better ending. But if I were to say buy, rent or pass, I'm gonna have to say pass unless you really wanna check into this as like a Dexter fan. But really, to be honest guys, there really wasn't too much here. And again, if you take away anything from this video, if you have not seen Dexter's, if you've not seen season one, two or four of Dexter, Go check that out right now. Those seasons were absolutely perfect. And yeah, just go check those out. But anyways, guys, let me know what you thought of Dexter New Blood. Were you as disappointed in it as I was? Did you think it was just mediocre? I actually had just a lot of difficulty watching this, especially because Dexter is just so behind. Like Dexter's behind the entire season. Like he's never in front of anything. And it's just hard to watch because it's like, man, I, everyone else knows more about Dexter than Dexter. And he never picks it up. He never figures it out. He just keeps making mistakes. So. Anyways, guys, let me know what you thought of Dexter New Blood. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. Having a great day out here. Hopefully, having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.